بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد our respected parents and dear learners assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh we take great pleasure in welcoming you to the first assembly for the 2021 academic year and subhanallah it is a very unique situation where i don't think many of us would have foreseen that we would have had an assembly of a virtual nature but before we begin any further we offer our gratitude our praises and our glorification for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and salutations and blessings be upon the great prophet nabi muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam we thereafter commence with a short qiraat from the holy quran ba'da a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin arrahmanir rahim maliki yawmid din iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdinas siratal mustaqim siratal ladina an'amta alayhim ghayril maghdubi alayhim waladdallin amin i would like to thank all of our parents and learners for logging on for this assembly um if you find that maybe youtube is data intensive they are data intensive you are welcome to change the settings if you are accessing this from your computer or from your cell phone or any other device you may click on the three dots and go on to the settings and quality and you may change it to 144p this will reduce your data consumption during this youtube session we don't anticipate to take too long and we want to focus on uh, the points that are pertinent to our parents and learners um so that's the first house rule um secondly um i want to welcome you once again and jazakallah for joining if you are away of any of your uh, friends or colleagues learners even your friends or colleagues that have not joined in please do share this link to them via whatever means of communication you have and they may join the session as well to begin today's session without uh, taking up too much time i'd like to call upon our esteemed principal um yesterday with our new learners we introduced our principal uh, mudir nasir ibrahim and again just a reminder that the word mudir is the arabic word for principal so i will call upon our esteemed principal mudir nasir ibrahim to render the first assembly for the 2021 academic year jazakallah khair Okay. Okay, shukran our respected Maulana Wasim who is our deputy principal at the school. Respected ulama, our esteemed educators, dear learners and parents that are joining us this morning for our first assembly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh greetings and peace be upon all of you It is indeed my pleasure this morning as the principal of Johannesburg Muslim School to welcome you to the 2021 academic year Alhamdulillah Had we been under a normal situation then we would have been meeting on site in our courtyard and we would have been addressing all of you there at this very first assembly for the 2021 academic year however as you all know things have changed we are living through a pandemic and hence due to the fact that at this point in time that we have a very high infection rate and we are in a lockdown situation as well we had to resort to this medium for our first academic assembly for the year 
Nevertheless, it is indeed a great pleasure to have all of you with us this morning on this online assembly. At my first meeting with my staff this year, I had mentioned to them that in the history of the school and in the history of my career, I never thought I will start off the new academic year by having to meet our educators as well as our learners online. Dear learners, esteemed educators, and parents, 2021 is a new academic year for us. As it happens at all educational institutions, the first assembly is where we welcome you back to school and we welcome many others to our very esteemed institution. This morning, I want to take the opportunity of firstly extending an, a welcome to all our old educators and our learners of the school. I must say with great pride that our educators and learners had met all the challenges that we went through in 2020. We had started the year and we had approximately one term on site. Unfortunately, due to this pandemic, we went into a lockdown and we had faced a new challenge. Many of our educators, as well as our learners, had to get on board with us with regard to the new medium of teaching and learning. And I must say that all our educators and all our learners cooperated and supported us extensively, alhamdulillah. And we were able to see the year through very, very successfully. We had embarked on uncharted territories and all of us, in a spirit of teamwork, we were able to end the, word, the year on a very, very successful note, alhamdulillah. So for that, I want to thank Express on behalf of our Board of Governors. I want to express our heartfelt thanks to all our esteemed educators for their sterling work and for all, to all our learners that were with us last year for having cooperated with us for having persevered with us despite the stressful situation that they were going undergoing. Shukran Jazeelan to all of you. It is also my pleasure this morning to welcome to our school a few new educators that have joined us. As it always happens that People move on, people move on to greener pastures. And as such, sometimes we have to make replacements. And this year we will have a few educators that will be joining us as well. I want to extend a very warm and cordial welcome on your behalf, on behalf of our Board of Governors, on behalf of all the educators at the school, to the following new educators that will be joining us for the 2021 academic year. We will start off firstly with our primary school. At the primary school level, we have joining us this year, Mu'alima Yumna Satar, who will be a grade four educator at the primary school. We welcome you Mu'alima and we wish and hope that your stay here with us is going to be a very, very happy and productive one inshallah. At the main campus, that is a high school campus, we have a very seasoned educator that will be joining us, right, Ma'am Tilly, who will be joining the Afrikaans department as well. 
Amam Tilly has got years of experience in teaching of Africans at various institutions. And I was also informed that she had been previously at our school and she moved on to explore other avenues. And once again, she's returning to us. Welcome, Ma'am Tilly, to our school. It is a great pleasure to welcome also to our school another very seasoned educator, Mr. Samuel Mavu, who will be joining the science department at our school. Mr. Samuel is also one that has been spent many years in education and had an extensive experience, not only at the classroom level, but also at management level. And we deem that Mr. Marvu, Mr. Samuel Marvu, will indeed be a great asset to our institution. So, sir, we welcome you, and we hope that your expertise will be put to very valuable use here at our esteemed institution. We also have a few educators that are joining us in our Islamia department, alhamdulillah. We have a few, th three young educators who will be joining us. And I'm sure in the time that they are going to spend here with us, that they will not only learn the ropes here with us, but at the same time, they will make a very valuable contribution as far as the Islamic curriculum and the Islamic ethos of the school is concerned. So we want to welcome the following Islamia educators to our school. Firstly, we have Mo'alima Razina Nanabai. We have Molana Muhammad Nana, and we have Molana Usama Ahmad. These, these three educators will be, inshallah, joining the Islamia department of the school. Alhamdulillah. We welcome them and wish them all the best during their stay here. We hope and pray that they're going to benefit from this very esteemed institution and that they will make a greater contribution, not only to the school, but also in our wider community, inshallah. Dear learners and parents, it is also my duty this morning to welcome all the new learners and parents to our school. Alhamdulillah, this year we have seen actually an increase in the number of applicants at our school. And we have not only been able to sustain the role of our school, which is well over 900 learners at this point in time, but we have seen a great demand for certain grades at our school. Alhamdulillah. And that speaks for itself that Johannesburg Muslim School is a school that has been well established now for over 30 years. It has a remarkable track record in terms of its performance. It has a great history and a great legacy. And from this very, very wonderful and esteemed institution, we've had many professionals that have graduated from here. And these very great professionals and business people, they are making a tremendous contribution to this country as well as to the community. We want to welcome all our new learners and all our new parents. Firstly, we want to thank you for making Johannesburg School your school of choice. We can rest assure you that your stay here will be a very happy one, a very productive one, and we hope and pray that inshallah you'll stay with us till the end of your matriculation year. And we will ensure, and we will do everything that is possible to ensure that you leave this esteemed institution with a very good pass at the end of your matriculation year. So welcome on behalf of the older learners of our school, our esteemed staff, the Board of Governors. We want to welcome all our new learners and new, new parents to our school. As we return to on-site, inshallah, 
We hope that we will get to know you, each and every one of you that have joined our school on a very personal level. And we will be able to work together as one happy family of Johannesburg Muslim School. My dear learners and parents, we are living through very difficult times. We are all aware that we are going through a pandemic. We have the virus that is spreading very rapidly throughout the country at this point in time. And our government has taken the necessary steps to try to curb the spread of this virus. During the course of last year and at the beginning of this year, many of us have lost loved ones, we've left, lost close friends, we've lost family members, we've lost people in the community that we know about. May the Almighty grant all those that have passed on general for those and the highest stages in general. At the same time, we also hear about many of our colleagues, many of our friends, many family members that have unfortunately contacted the virus also. To them, we pray and we hope that they will be granted, that the Almighty grant them complete shifa, inshallah. Now, my dear learners, let us understand and accept and agree that this virus is not a joke. We all have to take the necessary precautions to ensure the safety of everyone, be it our family members, be it our parents, grandparents, be it your friends, and be it anyone else that we may be coming in contact with. So we want to make a very earnest appeal to you to not, to, to not be negligent, to take the necessary precautions as we have been advised by the health experts to ensure that one, you wear your face mask at all times. And preferably if you come back on site to even wear a face shield as I always do. You should sanitize regularly. You should wash your hands regularly to ensure that if any way you somehow come into contact of this virus, you will be able to keep safe by practicing all the health protocols. When you do come on site, we as a school can assure you that we will take all the necessary precautions to ensure your safety here at the school. Our support staff work round the clock during the course of the day in ensuring that the place is entirely sanitized, the classrooms are sanitized, any way that we come into contact to, with is sanitized. At the same time, Dear parents, if you are not aware of this, then please note that on a daily basis, that once all learners and educators leave the school, we fog every classroom and every office area of the school to ensure that when our learners and educators return to school the next day, that the school campus is safe for all of them. So while we as a school put in all the necessary protocols in place, the health protocols in place, we will request the same from you as learners that will be coming to the school. Inshallah, we hope that come the 15th of February, if there is no further lockdown, and if the Department of Education and government allow us to bring back learners, we are looking at that date as to when we will be phasing in all our learners back on site here at the school. But we want to give you our personal guarantee as the management of the school, that the return of your child to school, you can be rest assured that he or she will be safe because of all the protocols that we have put in place here at our school. While we are on that note, I just want to make it known to all parents and all learners that if, if in any way 
you come into contact with the virus and if you are ill or if you come into contact with anyone that may have the virus, then we make an appeal to you to please stay at home and advise the school accordingly that you are not coming to school because one, you have contacted the virus or a family member has contacted the virus or you have even come in contact with someone that has had the virus. We would like to ensure that we try also as an institution to limit the spread of this virus. So yes, we are telling you, unlike other situations when we would be phoning your parents and asking them why you are not here at school, in this case, it's going to be slightly different if in any way you have come into contact or have the virus, then please advise us and stay at home until you are fully recovered. Dear learners and parents, educators, we move on to look at what does our school stand for? Now, at every school, we have a vision and a mission statement. But this morning, we're not going to look at that, but rather, we also have a number of core values at a school. I just want to take a look at one very important core value that we have here at John Isabel Muslim School. And personally, this is the core value that is highest on the, my list of priorities. Last year, when I took up the position as the principal of the school, at, at my very first assembly, those learners that were with us last year will remember that I spoke about a very important value in our lives, and that is respect. And this morning, I want to once again emphasize on this very important value of respect. Now, all of us that are here at the school may not be in a position to gain 10 A's and pass every test with flying colors. We quite understand that. But there are certain things that each and every one of us can do. And yeah, I'm referring now to this value of respect. As I mentioned, on my list of priorities, it is number one. Respect is number one on my list of priorities. Then comes other aspects of the school, right, and the other values that we have. Even your passing in the classroom, your your hundred percent in your tests and exams is lower down. Respect is number one on my list of priorities. And as a school, we are going to expect from every single learner here at the school that they show respect to everything. Firstly, to your educators in the classroom. Secondly, to the support staff that we have here at the school. Thirdly, to your friends and colleagues that you have in your class and to the environment in which you are in. It is not a difficult task for all of us to show respect and therefore we're going to expect this from each and every one of you. I can assure you, if you can practice this value here at our school and later on when you go into the world of work, it will take you indeed to great heights. You can be rest assured of that. So my dear learners, when you return back on site, personally, I will be expecting to see this from many of you. And at the same time, I'll be expecting you to practice this value here at our school, inshallah. We had started the year by going online. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic and due, due to all the regulations, uh, which we as an institution, an institution have to comply with, we had to revert to our online system. We are indeed very proud of the fact 
that last year, when we had to transition the school from on-site to online learning, we had set up a very robust online system. Our IT team that worked round the clock to ensure that we got a very efficient uh, system running. We were able to set up a system to ensure that teaching and learning continues at our school. We had achieved great heights with and a lot with regard to our online system, alhamdulillah. To the extent where sometimes towards the mid-year, we were able to even have an online exam. Now, unfortunately, due to regulations and due to the spread of this virus, we had gone into another lockdown. The country, there's been an appeal made by the government to ensure that we try to nip the spread of this virus. And schools have once again been closed. I'm sure you're all aware that for at this point in time, the date of reopening of the schools will be the 15th of February. We as Johannesburg Muslim School decided that instead of waiting till the 15th of February, let us get on board. Let us try to ensure that our learners do not lose time. Even if we have to gain between 50 to 75% of work online, we had at least achieved something. And hence, we will be now reverting to online as from Monday onwards. Today has been the first day, first official day for us as a school. However, from Monday onwards, lessons will start. We have brought up a new timetable for online learning and it will be sent out before the end of today. Our educators have received their online timetables. Our learners, you will definitely receive the online timetable before the end of the, of the day. While I'm on that point, I just want to make a very earnest appeal to all our parents and our lovely young learners. We still have a lot of time before schools actually reopen for on-site learning. We are not even aware whether we will go into a further lockdown. We hope and pray that we don't. From our side, we would like to make a very humble appeal to all our parents and learners to ensure that you log on timelessly for your lessons. As per our timetable, lessons will commence at eight in the morning. Your teachers will take register and they will continue with teaching and learning right up till two o'clock. This applies to our primary school as well as our high school learners. As far as the preschool learners are concerned, your times are slightly different and there will be a memo, a memo coming out shortly to you as to what will be the times for our preschool learners. So once again, dear parents and learners, Please be responsible, right, and ensure that you join us, you log on onto all the classrooms for your own benefit. When we return on site, we will try to bridge the gaps of what we could not do online, inshallah. Our respected parents and dear learners, everything cannot be gloomy. I mean, I'm indeed very, very honored to announce to you that inshallah, within the course of this year, we will be moving to our state-of-the-art premises. As you are all aware, Johannesburg Muslim School, we have built a new campus out in Crosby, a school which has got all the facilities, state-of-the-art facilities, which have got all the necessary specialist rooms in terms of laboratories, etc., as well as all the sporting facilities that our children would love to have at the school. And as such, the Board of Governors right, have taken a very serious decision to move the school this year to our new campus. 
Unfortunately, due to the pandemic last year, we were not able to complete the premises. But however, this year has started on a very positive note as far as the new school is concerned. We have the construction workers on site at this point in time, busy trying to get the school ready for us. And inshallah, we are hoping that come mid-year that we will be able to move to our school premises. So yes, while we are meeting up to all the other challenges which we are facing through this pandemic, we can be very, very happy at the fact that very soon we will be moving to our new premises, inshallah. We request from you, your very sincere duas, that everything goes smoothly for us so that we all can be there at our new premises during the course of the year. Learners, I've come to the end of my very short presentation to you at our very first assembly. I've requested our esteemed and very respected Molana Wasim Lahir, who is the deputy principal of the school, to discuss with you some of the policies of the school, as well as the rules and regulations of the school. Although we may be online, we just want to highlight some of the very important rules and regulations that we need each and every learner at the school to abide by and comply with. If we all can put our hearts and minds and hands together and work as a team and work as a happy family, then inshallah, we will be able to take the school to even greater heights. We'll be able to take the school from a good school to a great school to and beyond, inshallah. Mulana Wasim will outline everything to you this morning with regard to online classes, some of the things that you need to know about the online learning platform that we have, as well as some of the conditions that we are going to attach to this new medium of learning. So on my behalf, I want to once again welcome all of you back to our very esteemed institution. We want you to look forward to coming to our school. We want all of you to be happy here at our school because that is one of the main focus that we have here at our school is to have a very happy environment where teaching and learning takes place. My personal philosophy is that learning takes place in an environment of love and care. At the same time, I just want to highlight what is the motto of the school. If you have looked at it, if you are aware of it, then the motto of our school is where every child is important. So dear parents and dear learners, each and every one of you is very, very, very important to us. And we as educators at the school will do everything that is necessary to ensure that you gain the maximum from the teaching and learning that goes on at this very esteemed institution. And one day, inshallah, we hope and pray that you'll be able to stand out in our community as an ambassador of the school. And at the same time, make a contribution to our community and to the country as a whole, inshallah. With those words, I want to wish you all the best for the 2021 academic year. And at the same time, I want to make appeal to all of you. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Try to ensure that you practice all the health protocols that have been prescribed not for your own sake, but for everyone else that is around you, inshallah. Once again, welcome back to Johannesburg Muslim School. We hope you're going to have a very successful year, inshallah. And we wish you all the best for the rest of this year. Shukran, jazeelan, assalamu alaikum. I will now hand you over to our very esteemed and respected Deputy Principal, Mulana Wasim Lahir.
Jazakallah khairan to our very respected and revered principal, Mudir Nasir Ibrahim, for those very warming words and very welcoming spirit. And under normal circumstances, and in fact, the whole week we were here at school as the staff trying to set up things and get things ready. And alhamdulillah, whilst we are in the state of readiness for online classes, it is there's a sense and a feeling of the absence of the learners at school. And I often remark to my colleagues and I tell them that I miss the children coming in the morning and they will greet you, assalamu alaikum wa alim, and we'll have a small chat. And just to see the lovely smiles of our learners, the warmth that they bring to the institution, and just the overall vibe of having the school and all of the learners here. But alhamdulillah, we also thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that despite whatever challenges the pandemic may bring, in it there is also goodness. Allah has given us an opportunity that we, Johannesburg Muslim School, uh, had the vision of implementing technology and access to technology for our learners and our staff. The pandemic fast-tracked that process and vision. And Alhamdulillah, I'd like to inform our parents and our learners that we are in a state of readiness for the online classes. Inshallah, after this assembly and this induction program, at 10 o'clock, there will be a uh, form class meet and greet. So if you log into your Google Classroom, you will notice that your the subjects that you do are there. You will see your form class that is there. If you are, in, for example, in grade 3A, and you log into your Google Classroom, you will see grade 3A is there, and you will be able to log into your classroom, and you will meet your teacher. They will have a live session with you, and they will explain some of the aspects with regards to online teaching, um, I know for foundation phase, grade one, two, and three, the ideal would have been if they could come to school, meet their teacher. In fact, a colleague was saying yesterday that uh, a grade one child came to school and insisted that they wanted to be here uh, just to take a walk around and see their classroom, uh, to see what the feel was like. I know my own son also is starting. He's also in the foundation phase. And he's also very eager to, to want to start at school, meet his friends. And the online environment, whilst alhamdulillah, it does provide a platform for us to teach and to learn. Uh, but the social aspect of meeting one another, greeting, playing together, talking with one another, that aspect is somewhat lacking. So we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we may resume on-site teaching as soon as possible, inshallah ta'ala. As I had mentioned earlier that the online system is in a state of readiness, I would like to request our parents and our learners that if you log into your account and you see any class that is missing or you are in the wrong class, and please do inform the school. You can send an email to the school or you can send a message to any one of the educators. Uh, ideally, if you can send an email to it at the jhbmuslimschool.co.za, I will include this email on, I will just put it very briefly on the chat, um, the email address that you can inquire and ask about if you have any queries. Okay, so I've put on that email address there should you have any queries and they will be able to attend to you. I'd also just like to inform that those learners that enrolled into our school yesterday, um, we will be adding you shortly, inshallah, before the end of today, you will be enrolled in your classes. Um, so please, if you could just bear with us for the moment. Uh, but everyone who applied from before yesterday, even the day before, you will find if you log in, you will be in your classes. So just very briefly, some of the guidelines and some of the procedures that we need to adhere to is if you put in your login details, you are welcome to use any device uh, to access your online classes. It may be a laptop, it may be a cell phone, a tablet. Uh, and parents, sometimes learners will use this opportunity to tell you to buy a very fancy device. The requirements for online teaching and learning is not very intensive. It doesn't require a very sophisticated device. Most devices will work. I do know that for the Apple devices, it will require an iOS version 12 or later. Uh, with the Android, it will require at least an Android version 5.1 or later. Um, and if you find that it's not working on your device, it's giving you issues if you're trying to install the app or you can't download it from the Play Store. It's a very rare occasion. It may happen uh, maybe a one in 500 situation, but we do get one or two parents coming in and saying, I'm having this error. 
Um, and last year when we queried it, it said that uh, unfortunately maybe the device might be too old or it might not meet the requirements. However, that is very, very rare and most normal modern devices will be able to access the platforms and the tools needed for online teaching and learning. The tool that we use is Google Classroom. And the moment you download the app and you go into your classroom, you will see if you're accessing it from your cell phone, you will have three icons at the bottom. It will have your stream, people, grades. And if you're accessing it from your laptop, you will see at the top, they will have the same stream, people, grades. And uh, from there, you can access everything with related to the classroom. So our educators have been informed, and alhamdulillah, the majority of them uh, experience using class, uh, Google Classroom. Even many of the new teachers are experiencing using Google Classroom. Those who did not have the experience were given a workshop on how to use it. Uh, we use what is called the LEARN approach, L-I-R-N. So the LEARN approach means that every class will have a live session. So inshallah, from Monday, you will be issued a timetable today. The timetable starts at 8 o'clock and you will have a number of periods in the day. There are a total of nine periods. And in between, there will be a break of 20 minutes. And even during some of the periods, some educators may just keep five or 10 minutes in between in case a learner may need to go to the bathroom. I would like to encourage even our foundation phase educators to take note. As we know, many of our children need to visit the bathroom regularly. So at least give a break the last five or 10 minutes so that children can go to the bathroom. If you want to drink some water, just get, grab a quick bite. Uh, they can just refresh themselves and uh, come back to the online classroom. So the timetable will start at 8 o'clock and it will finish at 2 o'clock. There will be a break in between for 20 minutes. And uh, some of the educators may give a few minutes in certain periods so that learners may refresh themselves. It does become a bit um, stagnating when the learner has to sit in one position for very long and they have to uh, watch lessons and interact and such. So that's why the little time is given so at least learners can move around. So as I mentioned, the first aspect of the learn approach that Johannesburg Muslim School uses is that every class will have a live session. So when the learner goes into the classroom, the educator will inform that the class is now live. There will be a Google Meet link. The, the learner just has to press on the link moment you press on it, it will launch the app Google Meets, which functions almost exactly similar to Zoom, which is a very well-known platform. And the moment you click on it, you will go into the classroom. All of your colleagues and classmates will be there. Your educator will be there. And it's very simple, very easy to use. I think sometimes as parents, we are more daunted by technology. And as you may know, often our children, they are able to provide direction and show us how to use technology. They're very au fait and they are very comfortable around technology. So last year, alhamdulillah, many of the learners, in fact, most, if not all of our learners, got on very quickly to the platform and how to use it. So the live session will take place. It will be a video that is interactive, uh, where the educator can speak, that the learner can unmute their mic and they can speak back. Uh, they, they can turn their video on. There can be even a physical demonstration. Uh, so for lessons like Quran, where the educator needs to test the learner, they, uh, the learner can unmute the mic and they can even put the camera on and they can read from the Quran back to the teacher. And it can be a one-on-one -on -one teaching of Quran and testing of sabak and everything else. So this will apply to all subjects. The second aspect of the learn approach, so the first was L for live sessions. The second is I for interactivity. We encourage all our educators and our learners to be as interactive as possible, as it would be in a normal classroom. So educators are to ask learners, sometimes, especially in the higher grades, we have learners who are there, they put the camera off, and they can go on and do something else. They'll change to uh, something else on the device, and they're not really focusing on uh, the classes that are taking place. So educators, you can just call out uh, at random, uh, Muhammad, did you understand that point? Like in a normal classroom. In a normal classroom, children are physically there, but men mentally they are away. They may doze off, or they are not paying attention. So to ensure that learners are paying attention, call learners' names from time to time. Muhammad, Fatima, Aisha, uh, do you know what, uh, what did I discuss here? What do you think about this here? Please answer this question here. Please give me your input on this point here. So let there be constant interaction. So even from the learners, learners, please, you are more than welcome to, to interact, ask questions. You will notice on Google Meets, there is an icon of a hand there. If you press that, it will raise the hand and the educator will see it on their screen. Uh, to show that you have a question. So if your name is Muhammad Khan, for example, and you press the icon, the hand, uh, the teacher will see a notification there, Muhammad Khan has raised his hand. And then uh, the teacher will take your question or your input. 
So that's the second interactivity. Number three is, is R, which stands for recording. Recording simply means that the live session that takes place in the class is recorded by the educators. It's then placed in the classroom. The reason for this here is whilst we don't entirely encourage recordings, there are two great benefits of it. Number one is if for any reason there is load shedding in your area or you are having connectivity issues, uh, if you have uh, Wi-Fi or fixed internet like ADSL or fiber and it's not working for some reason and you can't attend the class or you're using mobile data and your data ran out and now uh, you're missing the lesson, that recording will benefit you as you are able to access it later. You can always watch the recording later and you can benefit from that lesson. If you have any questions, you can always then message your teacher and say, I didn't understand this aspect of this lesson. Could you please explain to me this part here? And then from there, you can interact with your teacher. So that's number three, the R, the recording. And number four is the notes. Oh, sorry, the second benefit of the recording is that when it's time for exams and you wish to refresh your work and you remember, hey, I'm writing this aspect of, um, let's say, the Civil War. You're doing social sciences or history and you forgot something, but you remember it's in this lesson, you can quickly go back to the video and re-watch the lesson to get back the information that you need and it will assist you with your exams. So this recording does have many benefits to it, but we don't encourage it, we, we encourage that learners should participate in the live, but the recordings are there as a backup, as an option when you are unable to participate in the live recording, uh, in the live session. And finally, the, the letter N, L-I-R-N, the letter N, stands for notes. These are notes that are given by educators. So it's not just a live session. Some educators during their live session, they will use uh, maybe a whiteboard. They will use uh, maybe uh, a jam board, which is an online whiteboard. They will use different ways depending on the subject. The nature of each subject is different. Some will use PowerPoint, some will use PDF, some will use Word documents. And these are all the things that you will get very familiar with. It's very simple. It is nothing complex or difficult. Very quickly, you will begin to understand how they all work. And the educator will place all of these things in your classroom. So if you are learning a, a section, and let's assume you are learning about numbers. So if you have their mathematics numbers, and you have prime numbers, even numbers, you are learning mathematics, addition, subtraction. So all of the notes that are there will be there, and you can access it at any point in time. You can download it to your device. You can open it. If you wish to print it also, you can print it. You can read it. You can study from there. So all of these things, the live session, the recording, the notes, the interaction, we are trying our best to, to try to simulate a classroom environment in order to benefit our learners. So I encourage our educators to, to please adhere to the learn approach, L-I-R-N, so that it benefits our learners uh, as much as we can. Secondly, uh, for your first lesson, and this is especially for our educators, is that when you have your first subject lesson, so let's assume on Monday, your first period, if you are in, for example, I'll use grade three A as an example, and your first lesson is English, and you go into your English class, I like to encourage the English educator before resuming work, meet with your learners. Yesterday, you'll have your form class meet and greet, but especially for foundation phase, and in fact, for all the grades, meet with your learners, uh, just ask, uh, have a one-on-one -on -one with each one, spend your first lesson just getting to know your learners. Uh, that's how it's done at school as well. Uh, getting to know your learners, talk a little bit about your subject. The only thing that's a little extra when the online platform, just make sure your, your learners are aware of how the platform works. Make them familiar even with the most basic of things just to refresh their memory and how do you end uh, the live call. There's the red button that's there. How do you enter the chat? There's an icon that looks like a message. You press on it and then you can type in a message in there. How do you raise your hand? And uh, do practical demonstration. Say, Fatima, please, can you show me how do you raise your hand? Uh, Muhammad, uh, can you show me how to send a message on the chat? But this, it's a learning experience and all of the learners benefit from it. Um, furthermore, also, when it comes to the, the first uh, lesson, please inform the learners what books they need. Alhamdulillah, more than 90% of our learners have picked up their textbooks and their notebooks at school. Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah khairan for coming through. Um, but many of the books, some of the learners may have got mixed up because the notebooks, they did not write which notebook is for which subject. So when you go on for your first class subject educators, again, I'll use the grade 3A English as the first period on Monday. When uh, you're having your class, inform your learners, okay, for English, you have picked up two A4 32-page notebooks. So please write your name and write your subject, just like we would do in a normal classroom. Just don't just re, uh, start with work because uh, learners are still finding their footing, but make sure that everyone is on the same page. 
guide them, give them that uh, firm footing so that they are able to uh, follow the classes very easily. So tell them exactly how many notebooks they can write their names and their subject on the notebooks. Parents, if you have covered your books already, that is fine. There's no issue. They can just write their name and the subject on their labels. I know some parents have already indicated they've covered, they've already written the names in it because they know which books belong to whichever subject it is. And that's fine. But if you don't know or you're getting confused which notebook belongs to which subject, the teachers will indicate in their classes during their first class with the learners, will tell them that this is which book belongs where. I'll also tell teachers that in case you may have a few learners that may not make it for the first class, uh, maybe they're still uh, uh, getting to grips with the system or they may have connectivity issues or load sharing, please just put uh, a message in the classroom. And for this subject here, grade 3A English, you are given one textbook, you are given one workbook, this is the name of the textbook, this is the name of the workbook, and you need two A4 32-page notebooks. Just That's just an example. So please put it for each subject in every classroom. So even a learner who misses the first class can easily go back and see, because they probably will ask you, that Mu'allima, or Mu'allima, how many books do I need? And you can very easily refer them to the message. You say, okay, this is the books that you need. Please write your name and uh, your subject and grade on your books. Moving on to certain aspects for the, the online classes, I just want to go very quickly through a few guidelines. Number one, we are encouraging all of our learners to be punctual. We have emphasized this with our educators as well, that they need to start classes timelessly. Educators may give a minute or two for all of the learners to join. Uh, but after that, we're encouraging our educators to start promptly with classes. We don't want to wait for every class five or 10 minutes because that's a lot of time that's being wasted. If every period wastes 10 minutes and if there's nine periods in the day, that's one and a half hours that goes for waste. So we can give one or two minutes for learners to, to join the class. Uh, once learners join the class, then the lesson will commence. And uh, educators may stay on the live session even after the lesson is completed. Um, maybe learners, uh, educator will tell a learner that you may do your homework now in the class while the live is continuing. And if a learner has any questions while they are doing their homework, they can ask the educator during the live or they can ask on the stream in the classroom. So it creates that, that sense of trying to simulate a situation in the classroom. And after the lesson is completed and the learner is doing their own work, they are able to ask the teacher uh, any questions and queries they may have. So please be punctual with your classes and make sure you are there on time. Number two, please sit in a very well-lit area. Uh, I think one of our fellow colleagues and uh, educators, Malima Fatima Dindar, she gave us some very valuable points and input when it comes to online classes. Uh, please sit in a well-lit area. Sometimes you, you sit in an area that's in a corner, it's dark, it's dingy. No, you, you're going to spend about six to seven hours a day on an online class while well, uh, looking at the screen. And Alhamdulillah, many screens have empty glare. It's not damaging to the eyes, but you're spending a lot of time. So you sit in a well-lit area, at least you'll feel a little nicer. You won't get uh, tired or, or exhausted very quickly. You will enjoy the experience because you are sitting in a well-lit area. Um, number three is, please make sure at least you are wearing proper attire. Uh, sometimes when it's online classes, some learners wake up five minutes before the class and they're still in their pajamas. They're watching the classrooms from their bed. Uh, there is no way for a school to check up and ensure that you are in your in your proper attire. Yes, a teacher may say, please put your camera on. I would like to see that you are dressed correctly and properly. And if you are not dressed properly, I won't allow you in the class. We have informed educators and we are telling them that if the learner is not dressed properly for the classroom, we're not saying they have to wear uniform, but they at least need to be attired properly. They need to be dressed properly. Because when you are dressed in your pajamas, you're in a very relaxed mode. You are not focused. You are not... Uh, uh, geared towards learning. But when you are dressed properly, you are ready, you are fresh, at least you've, uh, you know, you had a meal in the morning, you've got yourself ready for the day, then you are ready to focus on your classes. So please attire yourself properly. Again, I say it's not necessary to wear a uniform, but at least attire yourself properly. You will feel at least that you wish to learn, you will, you will enjoy the experience. Number four, is sit in a, a proper environment. As I mentioned earlier, don't sit in your bed and uh, access the lesson from there. Uh, many of you, your parents will be working. They may not be at home, especially the higher grades. The lower grades, your mommy may be there at home. Uh, mommy's in foundation phase. For the first few days, you may need to be sitting with your learners. 
uh, with your children and seeing how they interact with it. But once they get the hang of it, even grade one, two, and three, once they get the hang of it, they're very familiar with devices. As we know today, three-year-olds, four-year-olds are very easily, they can use devices, make their way around, even though they can't read. They know that YouTube is the red icon, and they know that Netflix is also a red end, and they can tell the difference between Netflix and YouTube. Uh, that's how OFE our learners are in today's time. So they get comfortable with it over time. But especially foundation phase learners, if mommy or daddy is there at home, if they can use the, the device under your supervision and sit in a controlled area, it may be in a dining room, in the kitchen, but in a controlled area where it's not a day in a slack kind of environment where in their bed, they're relaxing, take it easy. Rather let them sit on a table that's available somewhere. It's encouraged. If you don't have the facility, it's understandable. But if you do have it, please sit in a very controlled environment. Uh, we're trying, as I mentioned earlier, to simulate the classroom environment as so if you know that, for example, and again, I'll use the Monday example, if 8 o'clock is English, make sure your textbooks and it are ready. Not that you have to run back to your room to go and fetch your textbook. Oh, I forgot my pen. I forgot my, my notebook. Have all your books ready for the day so it doesn't waste time and you have your things ready. It's very easy for you uh, to make sure you've got everything. It's like packing your bag for the next day. Have your books prepared for your next online day to make it much easier for you and your uh, educators as well. If you don't have any data or you're experiencing load shedding, please inform your educator. Uh, just maybe send a message. I know while there's load shedding and you don't have data, obviously at that point in time, you can't attend the lesson. But educators will be keeping an attendance register of every single class, not once a day. They will check it in every period. So if you have nine periods, there will be nine checks by all the educators. And if you are not there, then it will be locked down to say that the learner has not attended. But if after that you put a message to your educator saying, no, I had load shedding, uh, I, had, uh, there, I had a bit of a data or connectivity issue, then uh, the educator will make a mark by it on the attendance register and we will then know, okay, this learner had a genuine reason. And uh, again, we're encouraging educators and parents and learners to try to benefit from the online platform as much as possible. It is not the ideal Johannesburg Muslim School. We have a very rich legacy and, and heritage and it is built through on-site teaching, through the classroom, through interactivity, and they have systems and, and everything in place for on-site teaching. Online is something new, it's something different. Uh, many institutions are scrambling, and alhamdulillah, I think we're one of the forefront runners uh, when it comes to online teaching and learning. And it may not be as good as on-site, but benefit from it as much as possible. We've noted that from 2020 last year, that those learners who were, were slack during the online classes. They didn't participate. They said, no, no, online learning is not for me. I, I can't enjoy it. I don't know how to do it. Those learners performed academically poorly in comparison to those learners who were participating in the classes, trying to benefit, trying to learn. They will benefit from there. So we encourage all of them to please make sure that you are attending your classes punctually. If any parents or learners have not yet collected their textbooks or stationery, you are more than welcome to come through. Uh, there may be just be a slight bit of a wait, but you are welcome to come through and collect your, your textbooks if for whatever reason you could not make it yesterday, the day before yesterday. So the textbooks and stationery is still available. The notebooks and your Google login details, it is still available, and you will be able to come through and fetch those. Uh, your Google login details has been given to every learner. Uh, we have been receiving queries wherever learners had difficulty and we managed to resolve, I think, the majority, if not all of those queries. If you are still having difficulty, you're more than welcome to contact the IT team. I've sent the email on the chat. You can email them and they will be able to assist you with any queries that you have. If there are any further questions with regards to online teaching and online learning, uh, your educators will inform you of any further uh, guidelines and rules in the classroom and they will be able to assist you accordingly. Uh, we make dua that inshallah we'll be able to resume on-site teaching as soon as possible. We hope and anticipate that this does not get prolonged uh, especially towards uh, the exam period. Alhamdulillah last year we ran a successful online exam but we hope and do not wish that uh, we rather prefer to have it here on-site. So inshallah with that I believe that's all the guidelines that I have uh, if there's anything else, we will then communicate it to our parents via uh, circular or any other means. And uh, I thank all of our parents, Jazakallah Khair and Ahsan al-Jazah, for entrusting your most prized asset, uh, your children, into our institute. And we endeavor and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us and uses us 
for the benefit of his dean, that we may adequately benefit all of our learners, all of our staff, and that we do all things that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would like to conclude the session with a very small and brief dua. Before the dua. Okay. I've just been requested just to remind our parents that the time to log on to Google Classroom, firstly, for the meet and greet today will be at 10 o'clock. Your educators will meet you, your form class educators will meet you at 10 o'clock today. Uh, these will be the same form class educators that you will meet when you come to school on site, inshallah ta'ala. And on Monday, our classes start at 8 o'clock. So please be prompt, be ready by 8 o'clock for your first class. Educators will be there in the classroom and they will, be, they will start the live session uh, very quickly. And uh, so please be prompt and punctual when you report for online classes, inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا وشفعينا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكون من الخاسرين رب اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين رب اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين رب اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين ربنا لا تزيغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هريتنا ربنا لا تزيغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هليتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم لك شكر كله ولك, شكر ولك الحمد كله اللهم لا نحسي تناعا عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاك الله خيرا We wish you all of the best Your learners and parents please remember us in your duas as well and inshallah we have hope and trust that everything will go well Zakullah khairan once again for logging in. And again, I echo the sentiments of our principal, Mudir Nasr Ibrahim. Uh, ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum to Jahanazba Muslim School. May this be not only a unique year, but also a happy, fruitful, and productive year. Zakullah khairan wa ahsan wa jazah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.